you. Wow. What a crowd. This is incredible. How'd you fit so many people in this room? Well, thank you so much for that warm welcome. It's great to be here. I can't thank you all enough for joining us tonight. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support of every single one of you in this room. Many of you here tonight have been with us from the very beginning. When five years ago, we launched an effort to bring common sense and fiscal restraint to Annapolis. Tens of thousands of Marylanders from all parties and all walks of life joined our effort to change Maryland for the better. People who were completely fed up with politics as usual and who desperately wanted a change of direction for our state. The common theme we kept hearing everywhere was frustration. People everywhere felt a real disconnect between Annapolis and the rest of Maryland. People felt that our elected leaders were not only not solving the serious problems that faced us, but they were actually causing the problems and making things worse. Over three years, we became the leading voice of opposition to the failed economic policies that were ruining our state. And we grew into the largest nonpartisan grassroots citizen organization in the history of the state. Eventually, it became clear that we couldn't really change Maryland without changing governors. So two years ago tonight, on a cold, snowy night in Annapolis, I decided to answer the call to step up to the challenge and to declare my candidacy to become Maryland's next governor. During the campaign that began two years ago tonight, we were outspent by five to one, by $16 million in one of the bluest states in the country. The odds were certainly stacked against us, and most people didn't give us much of a chance. But we never stopped believing, we never stopped working hard from one end of the state to the other. An overwhelming majority of Marylanders, regardless of party, felt that our state was way off track and heading in the wrong direction, and that new leadership was needed in Annapolis. Now, the monopoly in Annapolis thought that they were going to have a coronation. But thanks to all of you, instead, we gave them the toughest fight of their lives. They said it couldn't be done, but together, we did it. And in the end, we proved all the experts, the pundits, the prognosticators wrong. We won what was called the biggest upset victory in the entire nation. It had only happened once before in nearly 50 years in a state where only 26% of the voters are Republicans. But thanks to all of your efforts, we ended up winning 20 out of 23 counties by a margin of more than 35 percentage points. It was the biggest mandate for change in Maryland in 66 years. The citizens of our great state put aside party politics and partisanship, and they came together and voted to change Maryland for the better. We sent a loud and clear message to Annapolis that they heard all across the country. Of course, exactly one year ago today, on another snowy day in Annapolis. <laughs> We made history yet again. I was truly humbled to be sworn in as the 62nd governor of Maryland. And I was deeply grateful for the opportunity to serve my fellow Marylanders. It was a time to cast aside the status quo and to come together to build a better future for our state and all our citizens. 
On that snowy day a year ago, together, we celebrated a new beginning for Maryland. We pledged to set the bar higher, to create a bolder vision of the future for our state. And folks, that's exactly what we have done. We said that we would put Maryland on a new path, and together we have. We said that we would work to get the government off our backs and out of our pockets so we could grow the private sector, put people back to work, and turn our economy around. And we've been doing exactly what we said we would do. As I was taking the oath of office, all of the signs on our state highways were being changed to say, welcome to Maryland, we're open for business. I think they used to say, what's in your wallet? And just moments after being sworn in, I went up to my new office for the very first time, and I killed over a hundred new job-killing regulations that the outgoing governor tried to sneak through in the closing hours of his administration. We immediately put together new leadership throughout state government, attracting successful business people who know how to run things more efficiently and more cost-effectively. People with real-world private sector experience are actually running our state agencies. What a difference a year makes. Yeah. One day, one day after being sworn in, we submitted the first structurally balanced budget in our state in a decade. We proposed tax cuts for working families, retirees, and small businesses. And for the first time in recent history, we ended our first legislative session with no new tax increases. Now that's something almost unheard of in Maryland. I mean, let's face it. These guys never met a tax they didn't like, or at least one they didn't hike. We promised to repeal the rain tax mandate. The naysayers said it would never happen. But we got every single legislator who voted for the rain tax to change their mind and vote to get rid of it. What a difference a year makes. When the legislature wouldn't give us all the tax relief that we wanted, we decided to do it ourselves. We cut tolls at every single facility in the state, putting $270 million back into the pockets of taxpayers. It was the first time tolls have been lowered in more than 50 years. We reduced or eliminated more than 100 different fees all across state government, saving Marylanders another $51 million. And thanks to the Supreme Court's recent ruling, we're currently in the process of sending $200 million in refund checks to people all across the state. It's the largest tax refund in state history. In total, our administration has already taken $600 million out of the pockets of government and is putting that money back into our economy and back into the pockets of Maryland taxpayers. What a difference a year makes. And just last week, we announced an additional $480 million tax relief package, which will deliver additional tax relief to those who desperately need it the most, middle-class families, retirees, and small businesses putting our administration on track to provide more than $1 billion in tax relief to Marylanders. And let's not forget, at this time last year, Maryland had a $5.1 billion structural deficit, including a $2.1 billion deficit in 2015 and 2016. The state's finances were in terrible condition. In just one year, we have eliminated 
almost 90% of the structural deficit that we inherited. We paid off the bar tab that they walked out on. We paid down the credit cards. And now, our newest budget provides for $1.1 billion in the rainy day fund and a $450 million cash balance. What a difference a year makes. We increased edu education spending to historic, record high levels, investing in our kids. No governor has ever invested more. The previous administration had robbed a billion dollars from the Transportation Trust Fund. We had crumbling roads and bridges and the worst traffic in the nation. So we have invested an unprecedented $2 billion in transportation infrastructure, and we're fixing every single structurally deficient bridge in the entire state, and we're finally moving forward on every single top priority road project in every single jurisdiction in the state. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> Businesses, jobs, and taxpayers had been fleeing our state in droves. Maryland had lost 8,600 businesses. Unemployment had nearly doubled, and we'd lost 100,000 jobs. Now, Maryland is open for business, and businesses are returning to and expanding in our state once again. Last year, Maryland businesses had their best year in eight years. And we have added more than 53,000 jobs, the largest gain in the Mid-Atlantic region, and we're adding jobs at one of the fastest rates in the entire nation. What a difference a year makes. A year ago, an overwhelming majority of Marylanders thought our state was way off track and heading in the wrong direction. Nearly half of all Marylanders wanted to leave the state. But after all the progress we've made together, two-thirds of all Marylanders now believe that our state is heading in the right direction. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> Folks, that is an amazing turnaround, and one that our team is incredibly proud of. But I, you know, I knew that being governor of Maryland would be a tough job, and that I'd face some big challenges. I just never imagined that riots and cancer would be among them. And they didn't really teach a course on either one of them at New Governor School. <laughs> but just 90 days after I was sworn in, our largest city was in flames. 400 businesses were destroyed, and 170 police officers and firefighters were injured in just the first few hours. We were faced with the worst violence in 47 years, and Baltimore City was overwhelmed. We acted swiftly and decisively. I declared a state of emergency. We moved all our key operations to the city, and we brought 4,000 members of the National Guard and an additional 1,000 police officers with us. We immediately restored calm, peace, and law and order to the city. Our team got credit for decisive leadership and the strong and effective response, and now we're teaching others all around the country best practices and how to handle a crisis like that. And then, 60 days later, I was hit with a more personal challenge. I went from being focused on how to turn our economy around and put people back to work, to hearing doctors that I'd just met telling me that I had advanced and aggressive cancer, which had rapidly spread throughout my body. The outpouring of prayers and well wishes from all of you and from thousands of people around the state and around the world has simply been incredible and it is very much appreciated. Of course, just before Thanksgiving, I got the great news that I'm 100% cancer free and in complete remission.
I just want you all to know uh, that I am incredibly thankful to be able to be standing here with you tonight celebrating this one year anniversary. What a difference a year makes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we can get all these things done in just one year while dealing with riots and battling cancer, just imagine what we can accomplish together over the next seven years. Folks, we are moving Maryland forward. We are making progress. And we are just getting started. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. Thanks for believing in us. Thanks for all your support. With your help, we truly have put Maryland on a new path. And together, we are changing Maryland for the better. Thank you all so much. Yeah.